coming up on 5-Minute News. US to take broad action on Chinese software. Biden eyes major foreign policy shifts if he wins. And air pollution remains worst in US communities of color. It's Monday, August 3. I'm Anthony Davis. Donald Trump plans to take action on what he sees as a broad array of national security risks presented by software connected to the Chinese Communist Party, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said yesterday. Pompeo's remarks followed reports that Microsoft is in advanced talks to buy the US operations of TikTok, which has been a source of national security and censorship concerns for the Trump administration, though critics say at this stage the anti-China rhetoric is more about being seen to punish them for unleashing the coronavirus, thereby distracting from the administration's failure to contain it. TikTok's U.S. user data is stored in the U.S. with strict controls on employee access and its biggest investors come from the U.S., the company said on Sunday. We are committed to protecting our users' privacy and safety as we continue working to bring joy to families and meaningful careers to those who create on our platform, a TikTok spokesperson said. Trump had said on Friday that he would soon ban TikTok in the United States. A federal committee is reviewing whether that's possible, and its members agree that TikTok cannot remain in the US in its current form because it risks sending back information on 100 million Americans, said Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. A speculation grew over a ban or sale of the social media's US business. TikTok posted a video on Saturday saying, We're not planning on going anywhere. TikTok's catchy videos and ease of use has made it popular and says it has tens of millions of users in the US and hundreds of millions globally. But TikTok's Chinese ownership has raised concern about the potential for sharing user data with Chinese officials as well as censorship of videos critical of the Chinese government. TikTok says it does not censor videos and it would not give the Chinese government access to US user data. If the polling is accurate and former Vice President Joe Biden wins the White House in November, America will likely be in for a foreign policy about face as Biden reverses, dismantles or severely curtails many of Donald Trump's most significant and boldest actions. From the Middle East to Asia, Latin America to Africa and particularly Europe, and on issues including trade, terrorism, arms control and immigration, the presumptive Democratic nominee and his advisers have vowed to unleash a tsunami of change in how the US handles itself in the international arena. Historically, US foreign policy hasn't changed drastically as the presidency shifted between Democratic and Republican administrations. Allies and adversaries stayed the same, and a non-partisan diplomatic corps pursued American interests. All that changed with Trump. Under his America First policy, he viewed both allies and the foreign policy establishment with suspicion, while speaking warmly of adversaries like North Korea's Kim Jong-un and Russia's Vladimir Putin. His well-publicized withdrawals from the Paris Climate Accord and the World Health Organization won't actually become final until after the November 3rd election, if ever. Trump's initial problems may have reflected a lack of governmental experience by both him and his top advisers. That created a steep learning curve that was complicated by their intense distrust of national security institutions. Biden, with his Senate and White House experience, may be better positioned to deliver change swiftly. Biden's campaign has also assembled an experienced team of foreign policy advisers. Biden plans to reverse Trump's ban on immigration from mainly Muslim countries, restoring U.S. funding and membership of the WHO, and halting efforts to oppose the Paris Climate Accord. 
He promised to call top NATO leaders and declare of US foreign policy, we're back, while convening a summit of major heads of state in his first year. Wealthy white Americans are still getting to breathe cleaner air than lower income communities of color, despite significant nationwide reductions in pollution since the 1980s, according to a new study. Fine particle pollution has fallen on average around 70% since 1981, but air pollution is not equally distributed around America. The most polluted census tracts in 1981 remained the most polluted in 2016, according to the peer-reviewed research in the journal Science. Southern California in particular struggles with dirtier air from highways, fossil fuel operations and industrial facilities. Fine particle pollution is microscopic, about 40 times smaller than a grain of sand. It can travel deep into the lungs, bloodstream and brain and reduce life expectancy and contribute to lung cancer and heart disease. The vast majority of US census tracts saw little change in their pollution levels in comparison with the national average, with a few exceptions. The changes are likely from environmental regulations, declines in manufacturing, a reduction in coal use in some parts of the country and a boom in natural gas fracking in others. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Visit us online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an independent production covering politics, inequality, health, and climate. Delivering unbiased, verified, and truthful world news daily.